Polynomials are the building blocks to express numbers and the result of our computation. Instead of writing long sentences, mathematicians can represent the same idea concisely. So let's begin with our definition and the corresponding tool that we are going to use in order to visualize polynomials. Polynomials are expressions consisting of a constant. So let's say this is how we represent positive 1. We can say that the number 1 is a polynomial because it's a constant. Fractions are also considered as polynomials because their values are constant. So one half is an example of a polynomial. You can also have a square root of four because the value of square root of four is a constant. So any number is a polynomial because its value is constant. Now, aside from constant, a polynomial can also consist of variables and coefficients and operations, addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Let me explain that. Let us say that this is how we represent the variable x. So x is considered as a polynomial because it's a variable. So x is a polynomial. If we combine two x's, then we can write that as 2x. 2x is also a polynomial, so x as the variable, and 2 is called as its numerical coefficient, or simply its coefficient. Polynomial could be variables and coefficient in operations addition, subtraction, and multiplication. We can also add variables 2x plus x that is also considered a polynomial. We can also have negative x. This red with the same shape and length, same dimension as x, is called as negative x. This are x, positive, this is our negative x. A negative x is also considered as a polynomial. The same with the negative number one, it's also considered as a polynomial. We can also have the operation subtraction. For example, we have two x, we subtract one x, two x, Minus x is also considered a polynomial. Now, this is not limited to the same variables. You can also have another variable y. For example, if this is our y, then we can say x plus y is also a polynomial. And we can have several of those. We can say 2x plus 3y is also a polynomial. We can also multiply variables. For example, x times y is considered a polynomial. Now, how do we represent xy visually? xy is a rectangle with a length of x units and a width of y units. So x times y is xy. Visually, it is this rectangle with a length of x and a width of y. So these are all polynomials. But notice that you can perform addition, subtraction, and multiplication, but you cannot perform division. The reason is when you divide a variable by another variable, the result is no longer a polynomial. What we want here is to have operations between or among polynomials resulting to another polynomial, which we call as the closure property. Notice that in the definition, there is also that restriction. The variable must have non-negative integer exponent. What do you mean by that? If I have x squared, x squared is considered as a polynomial. And we can represent x squared as a square whose side length is x. So x by x unit, the area of this is x squared. So x squared is represented by this square. You can also have negative x squared as a polynomial. How do we represent negative x squared? We use the same dimension, but we use the color red to represent negative. Any other color is positive. So we can also have y. This is our y squared, and this is our x squared. So y squared is a square also with a side of y. Similarly, we represent negative the y squared as the same square as y squared, only that we have different color. We use red to represent negative. So all of these have integer exponent and they are considered as polynomials. Now, the degree of the polynomial is determined by whatever is the sum of the exponents of each variable. So for example, we only have one variable here, so we don't have to get the sum. Just pick what is the highest exponent that's the degree of the polynomial. In all these cases, the degree of the polynomial is second degree. We can also have a third degree polynomial. In fact, we can have polynomials of degree n, where n represents any positive integer. So how do we represent x cubed? x cubed is a cube like this, with a dimension of x for the length, x for the width, and x for the height. 
If you have a negative of that, it's a cube of the same dimension, but we use red color to represent a negative. So this is positive x cubed, this is negative x cubed. y cubed can be represented by a cube like this, with a length of y, a width of y, and a height of y units. And for negative y cubed, we can represent it by this red cube, similar in dimension as the positive y cube, only that it's color red to represent the negative. These are third degree polynomials because the highest exponent is three. The one that I would like to emphasize here is that in order to have polynomials, the exponent should be positive integers. So here are some of the examples that are not considered polynomials. So may I repeat, these are not polynomials. X raised to negative two, is not a polynomial. The reason is because we have a negative exponent. We cannot have a negative exponent for polynomials because when you have a negative exponent, this will result to a rational expression. You cannot have division x over y because when you divide x by another variable y, this expression is considered as a rational expression. This is not covered in polynomial expression. So we cannot have division. That's why this is not a polynomial. The square root of x can be written as x raised to one half. You can review your exponent and these two are equivalent. Now one half is not an integer. This is not an integer. And remember, in our definition, the variable should have a non-negative integer exponent. Yes, this is non-negative, but it's not an integer. One half is not an integer. That's why the square root of x is not considered as a polynomial. How about square root of 2? Is square root of 2 a polynomial? Yes or no? The answer is yes. Now you might be asking, why is it square root of x is not a polynomial, whereas square root of 2 is a polynomial? The reason is obvious in the definition. All constants are considered polynomials. And square root of 2 is a constant. Its value is fixed wherever you go, so it's a polynomial. You have to distinguish between the square root of 2 and square root of x because here you have a constant 2. In the square root of x, you have a variable x. And the non-negative integer exponent is, is required only for the variables, not for the constants. So how about one-third? Is one-third a polynomial or not, considering that you have a division operation here? The answer is yes, this is a polynomial because one-third is a constant. Four raised to negative one, you have a negative integer exponent. But still, four raised to negative one is a constant. This is not a variable. So if you have a constant, it's a polynomial. How about one over x? You will notice that x is a variable and there is a division operation. So we do not consider this as a polynomial. So let's go back to our definition again. Polynomial is an expression consisting of a constant. All constants are polynomial. Variables and coefficients like x, 2x, y, 2y, and operations involving addition, subtraction, and multiplication only. So you can have x plus y, x minus y, x times y, that's okay. But division is not allowed because when you perform division of variables, the result is no longer a polynomial. The result would be a rational expression which we are going to talk about later on. When we perform operations with polynomials, we want the result to be another polynomial, and we call that property as the closure property. And that's the reason why we limit the operations that we can perform here. Then we also avoid negative exponents, and we avoid fractional exponents, because those kind of exponents will result to a different kind of expressions that are no longer polynomial expressions. So when you are confused whether an expression is a polynomial or not, always check. Is it a constant? If yes, automatically that's polynomial. Does it involve variable? If yes, make sure that there is no division involving variables and make sure also that the exponents, if they exist, are non-negative integer exponent. Okay, with that as an introduction, let's do some operations on polynomials. So let's perform some operations with polynomials. For example, the problem is x plus 2x. What is the sum of x plus 2x? So this is our x and two of that would be 2x. So if we add x plus 2x, the plus operation means we are going to combine them. And since they are all of the same kind, we now therefore say that x plus 2x is equal to 3x. 
I want you to observe the pattern because I'm going to ask you about it later on. Next, if you have 3x plus 2 plus x, how do we represent that? So 3x is this, we need positive 2, and we need an x. So that's how we represent 3x plus 2 plus x. So if we combine them all together, what's the result? So you have 4x plus 2. We cannot combine 2 with the x's because they are a different kind. So therefore, we now say that 3x plus 2 plus x is equal to 4x plus 2. We can no longer simplify this further because 2 and 4x are a different kind as you can see from this representation. This is one common error that many students are making. When they see 4x plus 2, their tendency is to add 4 and 2 to get 6x. That is incorrect. Because you always have to imagine this 4x as something like a rectangle like this and 2 as something like a little square like this. And it doesn't make sense to call this as 6x because 6x means 6 rectangles like this. Definitely, this does not look like a 6x. So when you have two different kinds, one variable and one constant, you just write that as a binomial like that. No need for you to simplify further. Next problem. So how do we simplify 2x plus negative 3x plus 3? So this is our 2x. We are going to add negative 3x. So negative 3x is represented by this. So that's negative 3x plus 3. So we need 3 little squares like this. So together, this is 2x plus negative 3x plus 3. Now we need to add them all together, so let's combine them all together. And once combined, look out for zero pairs. So this yellow x and this red x will form a zero pair. We can just remove this zero pair. Anyway, the value is zero, so remove that. And then this two will form a zero pair also, so we can remove that. So what is left is a negative x and a positive 3 is equal to this one, negative x plus 3. So I want you to observe what's happening here. You have 2x and negative 3x. When you combine these two, we remove two zero pairs, so what's left is one negative x. That's the negative x. And then the 3 is just copied. Next example. If you have negative 4x plus negative 2x plus negative 4, so we have negative 4x, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we have negative 2x, you have 1 and 2. And negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. Now, the operation is addition, so we have to combine them all together. And then, how do we read this now? You have the same kind here, so we can combine, count all of these to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 red x, so negative 6 x. And this negative 4 is represented by this, so you have negative 4. Notice also what's happening. You have a variable x, you have a variable x. They are considered similar. We're going to define the term similar later on. So we can combine them to get negative 6x. This is a constant, so we just copy that as is. You can write it as negative 6x minus 4, or another way of writing that is negative 6x plus negative 4. Because subtraction is adding the additive inverse. We'll talk about that when we go to subtraction. Next example. How do we represent x squared plus 2x plus x squared minus 3x plus 2. So let's begin with x squared. x squared is a square that looks like this. This is our x squared. We need two x's, 1 and 2. And we need another x squared. So let's get, and this is the x squared. And we need negative 3x. So negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. And we need positive 2. So 1 and 2. Now, if we combine all together, notice that this x squared and this x squared can go together here to have 2x squared. And then we are going to remove the zero pairs for the x. So this one and this one will form a zero pair. So we can remove this. This one together with this one will form another zero pair. 
so you are left with that. And then 2 is a constant that you cannot combine with x squared with negative x. How do we read now our answer? Our answer, so how do we read our answer now? We have 2 like this, which we call as 2x squared. We have 1 red, which is a negative x, and we have positive 2. So, therefore, when we perform operations on x squared plus 2x plus x squared plus negative 3x plus 2, the answer is 2x squared plus negative x plus 2. Notice that x and x squared cannot be combined because there are different kinds. This is the x squared, this is the negative x. So we cannot combine them because they are different. I want you to observe that because later on we are going to generalize our rules. Okay, let's have another example. If you have x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1, what is the sum of that? So we need an x cubed. These are x cubed. And we need an x squared. These are x squared. And we need an x. That's our x. And positive 1. So, is it possible for us to combine x cubed, x squared, x, and 1? The answer is no, because physically, x cubed and x squared are very, very different. You cannot combine them. One is three-dimensional, the other is flat. x and x squared are also different kind, and a constant is different than the rest. So, x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1 is already simplified, and we cannot perform any simplification further anymore. Okay? And how about this? 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus x cubed plus 4. How do we represent that? We need 2x cubes. So this is 2x cubed, 2 of this. And we need 2x squared. So we need 2 of this. This 1 and 2. So this is our 2x squared. Negative x cubed is represented by a red cube like this. And positive 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. When we simplify all of this, Notice that this negative x cubed and this positive x cubed together will form a zero pair. So we can just remove these two cubes. Anyway, they cancel each other out. What we are left with is x cubed. So we are left with x cubed and this 2x squared and this 4. So that is now our answer. So let's develop now a rule for adding polynomials based on our observations. Let's look at the seven examples we had so far. At first, we have x plus 2x, and it gives us 3x. So what's happening here? x is understood to have a coefficient of 1, so this means 1x and 2x. And x and 2x are considered as like terms. When I say like terms, these are polynomials with the same variable and the same exponent. So since x and x are the same variable, and the exponent of x is 1, the exponent of 2x is also 1, we say that x and 2x are like terms. And when they are like terms, you just have to add the numerical coefficient. There's a numerical coefficient of 1 for x, a numerical coefficient of 2 for 2x, 1 plus 2 gives you the 3x. Next, for 3x plus 2 plus x, which terms are like terms? So remember, like terms are polynomials with the same variable and the same exponent. So x exponent is 1, x understood to have an exponent 1. So 3x and x are like terms. So you can combine 3x plus 1x to get that 4x. And 2 is a constant, so we just copy 2. We do not combine a constant term with a term with a variable. Next, 2x plus negative 3x plus 3. Again, x is the variable here with an exponent of 1. x is a variable here with an exponent of 1. So 2x and negative 3x are considered like terms. What we can do is just perform the algebraic operations between 2 plus negative 3, which is the reason why I ask you to go back to the lesson on integers. Because once the polynomials are similar terms, all you have to do is perform arithmetic operations on integers, on fractions, on decimals. In this case, we have integers, so you just add 2 plus negative 3, which is negative 1. That's why you have this negative x. It's understood that the coefficient of x is negative 1. And then 3 is a constant, so we just copy it 3 for the same explanation as number 2. We do not combine a constant and a term with a variable because they are different. For number 4, you have negative 4x plus negative 2x plus negative 4. Notice again that negative 4x and negative 2x are similar terms because they have the same variable x with the same exponent of 1. All you have to do is add negative 4 plus negative 2 which gives you negative 6 
and then you just copy the plus negative 4 or you can also write that as subtraction next let's look at x squared plus 2x plus x squared plus negative 3x plus 2 so again look for those terms with the same variable and the same exponent so x squared and x squared are similar terms so you can combine them this is 1x squared plus 1x squared and that gives you 2x squared and then 2x and negative 3x are like terms also so you can add 2 plus negative 3 to get negative 1x copy the x and then copy the positive 2 and number 7 look for similar terms x cubed and x cubed they are similar so you add the coefficient 2 plus the negative 1 that's implied here 2 plus negative 1 gives you positive 1 so that's why you have a 1 here that's implied and then copy the variable x cubed. So you are done with the x cubed terms, then you go to the x squared. There's only one x squared term, so we just copy that one, and there's a constant 4. So our answer is x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4. So that's how we add polynomials. So we can now say that in order to add polynomial expressions, when polynomials are added, subtracted, or multiplied, the result is another polynomial. We call that as the closure property. And during the operation, only like terms can be combined. And what are the like terms? Like terms are those terms with the same variable and the same exponent. Concretely, you can only add x cubed with another x cubed. You can only add x squared with another x squared. They must be of the same kind, similar for y and similar for the constants. So let's repeat. The main rule that you have to observe here is only similar variables with the same exponent can be added or subtracted and we call those as like terms now applying the rules that we have uh, formulated previously how do we now add 5x minus 2 plus 5x minus 2 now in mathematics there's a property called the associative property which says that you can interchange the order of the addends without affecting the value of the expression when the grouping symbol is preceded by a positive sign you can simply remove the parenthesis so we have 5x minus 2 plus you can remove the parenthesis because it's preceded by plus sign without affecting the value of the expression inside 5x minus 2 so that's our first step now using the associative property we can group together 5x and 5x and then minus 2 and minus 2 oops it should be 5x now what is 5x plus 5x these are similar terms so 5 plus 5 is 10 and copy the x this is negative 2 and another negative 2 together they will form negative 4 if you want a concrete representation of that, it will look like this. You need 5x. That's the 5x. And another 5x. Together, when you combine them, that becomes 10x. That's the reason now you just have to copy the common variable x. You don't have to make it x squared because you are not multiplying. You are just counting how many x's are there all in all. And there are 10 x's. And of course, negative 2 is represented like this. That's negative 2 and another negative 2. Together, when you combine them, you get negative 4. So, 10x plus negative 4. So our goal is to slowly remove the use of this manipulative once you started to understand how the rule works. But when you are confused, you can always go back to this mental representation and that's the way to do it. Number 13, we have the quantity 3x minus 4 plus 3y plus the quantity y plus 2x plus 3. So, again, if the grouping symbol is preceded by a plus sign or there is no sign it's understood to be positive, we can simply remove the grouping symbol. So, 3x minus 4 plus 3y. This is preceded by a plus sign. You can simply remove the grouping symbol. So, plus y, copy the same operation, plus 2x plus 3. That's the first step. The next step is to gather all the like terms. It must have the same variable, same variable, and the same exponents. So 3x and 2x are similar. So we copy 3x plus 2x. And then y and y, they have the same variable, 3y plus y. And then you are left with minus 4 and plus 3. So you copy that sign. Don't forget to copy that minus. Minus 4 plus 3. Okay. Now, when you rearrange the terms using the 
associative property, we, can, we are now ready to combine similar terms. 3x plus 2x equals 5x. 3y plus y is 4y. Remember, there is a numerical coefficient of y here. And then, this is the common problem here. Many students are thinking it like 4 plus 3. That's wrong. You should include the sign prior to the number. So this is understood to be negative 4 plus 3. So negative 4 plus 3 equals negative 1. And that is now our answer. Okay. Next. Now, so that you can really understand what's going on under the hood of this problem, let's have a visual representation of this problem. You have 3x. 1, 2, and 3. And you have negative 4. And you have 3y. 3y. 1, 2, 3. And then, and then we have positive y. So this is positive y. And then you have 2x. So we need two of this. 1 and 2. And you have positive 3. 1, 2, 3. And then combining them all together, these are the same kind. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So that's 5. So we have 5x. And then how many y's do we have? 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's our 4y. And here we can form zero pairs. So you have this zero pair we can remove, this zero pair we can remove, this zero pair we can remove, and so you have negative 1. That is why our answer of 5x plus 4y minus 1 is verified to be correct. I hope this is making sense with you now. Let's have more examples. So let's do this one. Again, the first step is remove the parenthesis preceded by a plus sign or there's no sign, just copy 7xy plus 4x minus 2. Remove the parenthesis minus xy minus 2x plus 4. And then combine similar terms. Look for the xy terms. Group them together. Always bring the operation prior to that number, so minus xy. And then look for the x's. You have plus 4x and you have minus 2x. Always bring the operation prior to it. And then minus 2 and then plus 4. Now, 7xy minus 1xy gives us 6xy. 4x minus 2x gives us positive 2x. Negative 2 plus 4 gives us positive 2. Since there's no more similar terms, then this is our final answer. Now, let's verify visually that our answer is correct. So we have 7xy. xy is a rectangle like this with a side length of x and a width of y. So the area is x times y. So an xy term is represented by this rectangle. And there are seven of them. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then you have four x. One, two, three, and four x. And we have negative two. One, two. Then you have negative xy. Negative xy is the same shape as the xy rectangle, but it's red. That's the negative xy. Minus 2x. So yeah, this is negative x, 1, and 2. And positive 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Notice that I select where to put them so I can group together those similar terms. That is possible because of the associative property. That says I can rearrange the order of the addends without changing the value of the expression. So when we simplify now, notice that we have a red and a blue here. Together they form a zero pair, so we can remove this zero pair. There are two red here, so we can remove also two yellow because they form zero pair. One pair, another pair. And then you have two red here, and with two yellow, they'll form a zero pair also. So I can remove this. So what's left is this. You have how many x, y? You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 x, y. That's why in our answer we have 6 x, y. Plus 2 x, this is the 2 x. Plus 2, that's the 2. So visually, we verify that our answer is correct. 
So you use this manipulative to further deepen your understanding of what's going on behind the hood when you are performing operations with polynomials. But once you get the idea of how it's being done and you understand the process, slowly you have to remove all these crutches, all these manipulatives, so that you'll be able to perform the operations mentally and abstractly in your head. Or at least using pen and paper. Because not every time you can use these manipulatives. But use this as a way for you to understand why you cannot combine an X with an XY because they are different. Why you cannot combine X squared with X because they are different. So let's try number 15. There is no sign here. It's understood to be positive. We can remove the parentheses and copy everything inside. There's a plus sign here. Simply remove the parentheses but bring the sign. Minus Y cubed plus 7 plus 2Y. And then gather all those similar terms. As you keep on doing this, you don't have to write all the steps anymore once you understand the process. You have 4y cubed and you have minus y cubed here, that is 4 and negative 1. There are similar terms, so you can perform the integer operation here. 4 plus negative 1 gives you positive 3. And then copy the y cubed. 4y squared, there's no other y squared, so just copy that one y and 2y so this is positive 1y positive 2y similar terms like terms add 1 plus 2 equals positive 3 and copy the y and then we are left with 7 copy 7 so can we still simplify this further no more because y cubed is different than y squared and y squared is not similar to both of those two and 7 is a constant then usually we write the answer in descending order of exponents 3, 2, 1, and then the constant. And we can verify this visually again one more time. So 4y cubed, which one is? So 4y cubed is this. 4y cubed, the length is y. 4y squared, so 1, 2, 3, and y, so that means 1y. So this 4y cubed plus 4y plus 1. Minus y cube. So we need a red y cube. Minus y cube. Plus 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Plus 2y. So we need 2y. Plus 2y. And then simplify. This y cube and this negative y cube form a zero pair so we can eliminate them. And our answer would be this 3 y cubed, so you have the 3y cubed, 4y squared, this is the 4y squared, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3y, this is the 3y, and then 7, this is the 7. So the final answer is 3y cubed plus 4y squared plus 3y plus 7. That's the visual representation of that operation. Now let's have subtraction. Subtraction is very much similar to the addition of polynomial. There's only one step that you have to perform. And that step is to use the definition of subtraction. We say that subtraction is adding the additive inverse. What, what do you mean by that? It means that if you have the quantity 2x plus 3 minus the quantity 3x minus 4, when you remove this minus sign, you have to apply this definition. So this one is preceded by plus sign. I simply remove the grouping symbol. So I have 2x plus 3. I have the minus sign here. I'm going to change this into addition. So from minus, from subtraction, that becomes addition. So I change the minus to plus. But notice what will happen. I have to change the sign of every term inside the grouping symbol. What's the sign of 3x? It's positive 3x. But now I have to write the opposite, minus 3x. I'm done with this. Now this is minus, what's the opposite operation of minus? It's the plus, it's the positive. So we can write it as plus 4. So in other words, when you have a minus sign here, all the terms inside the grouping symbol after that would change their respective signs when you remove the grouping symbol. So after that, we know what to do with this because this is just addition of polynomials. So there's just one more added step when you are subtracting polynomials. That is applying the definition of subtraction as the addition of the additive inverse. And what's the additive inverse? That's the opposite sign of the given number. Let's say you have 5 
The additive inverse of 5 is negative 5. The additive inverse of x is negative x. Conversely, if you have negative x, the additive inverse of negative x is the positive x. It's the opposite sign. Once you have this, we collect like terms. You have 2x and negative 3x. They are like terms. So we can combine them to get 2 plus negative 3 equals negative 1x or simply negative x. 3 plus 4 equals 7. So that's how we perform subtraction of polynomials. Let's have one last example. So if I have this problem, the quantity x cubed minus 2x plus 1 minus the quantity x cubed plus 2x minus 4. We remove the grouping symbol preceded by plus or there's no sign, just copy. There's a minus sign here, change the sign of all the terms inside. So from positive x cubed to minus x cubed, from plus 2x to minus 2x, from minus 4 to plus 4. So change the sign, change the sign, change the sign. Collect like terms. x cubed minus x cubed will cancel each other out. Because you can think of x cubed and minus x cubed as this. So that's canceled out already. Negative 2x and negative 2x, that gives you negative 4x. Positive 1 and positive 4 gives you positive 5. Some students have problem with the minus sign. Another way of solving this is like this. You can copy x cubed, copy negative 2x plus 1. Change the sign of each term inside the grouping symbol. So from positive x cubed to minus x cubed to negative 2x to minus to positive 4. So I change from positive to negative, from positive to negative, from negative to positive. Now when you have all these minus signs, you can change them to addition sign by using the definition of subtraction, which is adding the additive inverse. So from minus, that becomes plus, and get the opposite sign here, minus 2x, plus 1, just copy. This is minus x cubed, you can write that as addition, plus, the additive inverse of x cubed is negative x cubed. Change the plus sign and get the additive inverse of 2x as minus 2x plus 4. Once you converted everything to addition, it's easier for us to visualize. So you have x cubed, negative 2x, positive 1, negative x cubed, minus 2x, or plus negative 2x, plus negative 2x, plus 4. And then simplify, this one will cancel each other out. So this one will cancel each other out. They form zero pair, I can remove. And then this two can be combined to form negative 4x. And then this one will give us positive 5. So the answer is 4x plus 5. Which was similar to the previous result that we got. So now that you understand what's going on with combining polynomials, what you need are more practices. So in the link that we are providing, we are providing you with, with a lot of exercises with answer key that you can use to verify if your answer is correct or not.